Francois to reach where he was killed. When I entered the house, I found the car park, and the body was lying there in blood. I cried as if I'd never cried in my life because of the love for him. As I was crying, the president called me, asked me, what is happening? Those who were hearing or listening to the television yesterday are what I said. What I talked to the president, even now I don't know. <laughs> but I was mad. I was talking to him while crying. I even told him, Your Excellency, I cannot explain. You talk to the driver. And I gave the driver, don't want to talk to the president. So many people came, Minister, Security, ISO, ESO, uh, what? They were all there. But the body was there. After about one o'clock is when we leave the body to take to the mortuary. So that was the start of the problem. So what killed my brother was his bodyguard. His chief bodyguard, or team, the lieutenant, was also shot seven bullets. He's in love up till now. The legs, you see the body there, if they open and you see, he has 28 bullets on him. So he died in the most painful way, as if he had never been a soldier. He was fought all the wars in Uganda. Chiribong, Nakwena, Oti, Nga, Nga, Nga. He has fought. But he died in front of his house with a pistol in his hand and a big gun in the car, three guns. I said yesterday, God is our bodyguard, not even a soldier. I refuse to move as a soldier. Yesterday I was quarreling with one colonel at the gate when I was going home. You are a big man, why are you not going with the escort? I told him my escort is God. Don't disturb me. And I went and I drove because of hunger. Okay, excuse me. I have to tell you the background of what happened. I talk as a family member, as a head of visa with Tom. It's so unfortunate I'm talking English. I'm worried of my villagers who might not hear if they can translate to them. Because this is a council hall, I cannot talk in law. We officially here as councillors. Uh, it's not allowed, so let me continue <laughs> talking English. Okay, Lord. Those who know him started as the chairman LC5 of a pipes. Okero was a soldier, a divisional commander, or a brigade commander in Opint. Okero grew in all ranks of the army up to where he reached as a colonel. From private, recruited by his brother along, who was a captain. Okero, I told people, and I'm telling you, the mourners here, President called me and told me, Mola, I want you to deliver pipes. Here I'm an LC5 from UPC to NRM. I went and talked to General Aronda Delay. I said, General Aronda, can you ask the President to release Okello from Army so that he goes to contest in a pipe as here I'm an LC5? Because the people of Oyam the people who fight that time wanted him for the war or their lives he saved in Miraculo and in Kamdini. When Lakwena used to not see light or smoke anywhere. Once Lakwena's people see there's a fire or there's a smoke, they'll go and kill the people in all that area. So Kelo went and come there for two months fighting with these people until he cleared them and people came back and started cooking and fire came back. People could see that fire, women were cooking in the house. That's when the people there baptized him, Machu Drogo. That is not his name, which was given to him. Even that to go and swear an affidavit, we change his name to Machu Drogo, or to add on his name, Machu Drogo. Because of the serious fighting, he did. So Aronda came and told me, and one of the president has refused to release the colonel from the army, Say Okere is a very good fighter, as you saw in his letter, he named Okere Lion because of fighting. So Arona said, it's only you who can go and talk to the president. Then we'll allow 
I rang him and said, Mr. President, I want to see you for five minutes only. He agreed to see me that day. I remember he had just come back from a UN meeting in New York. So I called Beatrice Lagada, that time he was MP of a party, and Jovina Kake, he was our minister at that time. I said, President has given an appointment at 4 o'clock. Can we meet at Imperial Hotel at 3.30? So that we go and you be my witness to what I am going to talk with the President. Indeed, they came, we went, and when we entered the President, I said, Mola, what is the problem? I said, Your Excellency, I told you I want five minutes only. I'm not even going to sit. Why you have come, you have told Aronda, you cannot release Okello from the army. And you have called me and said I should deliver fight. I cannot deliver fight without Okello. Please, I beg you to release him. He said, no, Okello is a very good soldier. I remember my argument with the president. I told him, Your Excellency, if somebody is good in class, you're in P3, you're number one, you go to P4. P4, you go to P5. P5, you go to P6 until you sit for your PLE. How come he has been a major for 14 years without promotion, if it's good? Then he called his PPS, by then was called Ameria, it's about the former Minister of Trade. Ameria, promote Colonel Okero to the rank of Colonel and retire him. I said, I'm going, I'll finish my mission. I got out with Lagada and, our, and Jovino. I rang him from the gate, I said, my brother, the president has released you, just watch or go and see, read your army message. You have been promoted to colonel and you have been retired. Go to a pipe today, if you fail, I'll be in problems. He told me, my brother, I will not fail, I'll go through. He went and he won highly in a patch. so I was the happiest man. Very few mean years or months, they divided a patch. Oyam came in, so there was a by-election, in Uyam, Honorable Bidani said I was the Minister for Local Government. He called me in his office, said, my brother, you are very close to me, we are friends. I want you to go and talk to your brother today, today, that let him not make a political suicide, that's the word he used to be, to leave a fight to go and stand in Uyam. I called him and said, my brother Bidani has called me and told me to give you this message. He told me, Mwala, you know I come from Uyam. And the people gave me the name of my logo, I will get more votes than what I got in the past. I told him, I wish you luck. God bless you. He came and he got 93% in you know, Uyama. Thank people of Uyama for having voted him to that level. Then he has been what he is until today. All of you know what he has done. The speaker in his remarks was giving and we need more time in the church so I don't want to waste a lot of time in the council here. Okero was born on the 10th December 1958. He has died when he's 65 years. Okay, he was living on bonus because they said our lifespan is it 60 years? Those doctors tell us. Is it what year? Sorry, this is the council. You are not supposed to answer. <laughs> His parent was Muse, Lord Jago, Nathan Engola, all of you in Yamia know very well. And the mother was Ketula Engola. Okero died with the widow, Mrs. Joyce Okero Engola, who is there, will introduce because it's a council hall. We are not allowed. We will do it in the church or at home. He studied in a Atora Community Primary 7 School in 1967 to 1973. Sorodi Senior Secondary School from 1974 to 1978. He got a Bachelor's Development Studies from Kampala International University 2007 to 2010. Master's of Public Administration and Management, Kampala International University in 2013 up to date. Employment, he joined the Army in 1980 in the rank of private. Promoted to major and appointed commanding officer 501 Brigade based in Opit, Gulu. Promoted to Lieutenant Colonel as commanding officer 501 Brigade based in Opit, Gulu. Promoted to Colonel in 2006 and retired from the Army to join politics. In March 2006, elected to chairman LC3 with 93% of the votes of a district 
where it served for 10 years. 2016 elected member of parliament for Yam South Constraint, where he served till his death. Oyam North. Oyam North. Oh, Oyam North, sorry. I beg your pardon, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the 6th June 2016, appointed Minister of State for Defense. 2021, appointed Minister of State for Labor, Employment and Industrial Relationship. The position is served till his death on the 2nd May 2023. Okero survived with five children. Soro Nangwei, who is ASP, police, he was supposed to come with us, but she had a baby of five days because of the helicopter. The years for the baby would pass because that thing you're seeing there when you're in the air is your ears and gold. Some had okay and water junior with the first boy sitting there. I think has moved on. Daniel along granny with a soldier. Yesterday I introduced him in front of the president and I'm telling you members here because you know him. He used to say all the time, I hate soldiers, I hate soldiers. But his father will take note of that. So one day they were just sitting as a family and they were recruiting in Ginger. He called that lady, I mean, or team, the lieutenant, that get that boy, let him go and pick his ID without anything, and bundled him in his escort car and drove him to Ginger. He had already talked to Ginger. And when he reached there, the service air put him in a military uniform and said, You're a recruit. <laughs> so he joined the army. Yesterday was in full combat. You will see him on the battle day. Frank Owadokaka is a senior lawyer with the Court of Appeal in Kampala. He will also come down the way, coming. Feni Brian is a senior hospital uh, laboratory technology who has just finished from Kono University. We are getting him a job in uh, Mlago. But because of uh, these problems and time and documentation, we have not yet got, but it's going to work in government. He has dependents, his brothers, his sisters, children, whom he was looking after. Amoy Moni, Maureen, they're on the way. Dilis Mili Akwang, Olong George Ibrahim, Minyang Job, Alum Juliet, Apio Lucy, Akelo Joy, Ayugi Yovan, Engwala Joshua, Akero, Mavita, and Ayo, Rosette. He has survived with 19 grandchildren. Being a council, you will see them all on Saturday when we are buying. Mr. Speaker, the late was a friend, a brother, a helper, as the bishop said, was building a church where we are taking the body now. Not yet finished, but on this behalf of the family, we are going to pledge in the church that we are going to finish it to full capacity for his memory. He has done so many things. He has adopted very many people, we have seen very many dependents. Uh, three days ago, to his death, he adopted two children, whom I introduced yesterday to the president. I will also introduce them to the mourners on Saturday. These children have a father and mother. But I've told the men, and yesterday I was telling in front of the president, I'm telling the men here, when you get a new woman, don't just the children and that woman. Don't mix the children in your family affairs. This man threw his children, when the colonel comes home, he found the children cleaning the office, he found the children digging in his garden, he called them, they said they were looking for school fees. The father sent them away. So with his kind hearts, he decided to call the father, the mother of the children, sign an agreement to take care and take the children to school. They are on the way in the bus, coming with our children. So when we are burying, I'm going to introduce them. And as I'm still here until next week, I will look for the father and the mother and tell them not to be worried that because today their children will have no future. No, we have read agree because we put in writing that will take care of those children and look after them.